Hi friends, I'm Forrest and welcome to part two of our budget skiff rebuild where I take this boat and with a thousand dollar budget, yes, for $1,000, I buy this boat and rebuild it. I add all sorts of cool stuff. If you haven't seen part one, you'll wanna click the link above to see that first and see how we ended up here. In this video, we're gonna finish off the boat, some woodwork, some steering, some accessories, some just all sorts of good stuff that you're not gonna wanna miss. So without further ado, let's get this video started. Test run is complete. Next step on this skiff is going to be a um, li little bit more glass work. There's some little spots that I just want to um, fill. So down here, there's a hole up here where rigging used to be. Um, maybe up front, there's a tiny bit. But basically, I just want to do the last little bit of patches, make sure everything's watertight. Always wear your personal protection equipment. <laughs> Grinding is done. Wasn't too bad. Um, one of the important things when you're grinding and you're going to do glass work is, you know, you don't want to just buzz through the gel coat. Yes, you could probably get away with it, but you want to make sure that when you grind, you're grinding to raw fiberglass. So you just keep plugging away until all that gel coat is gone. Bare glass inside, bare glass. It's all bare glass. All right, so I've got all my pieces here. So I'm gonna use this as a wet out board. One of the things to think about when you're wetting out fiberglass, you know, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can wet it out on the spot that it's gonna go. Small pieces like this, I like to wet them out here, let them soak, and then I can take them over to the repair area. So um, one of the things to think about in the 1708, you can see the difference When you wet this out, you want to wet this out with the matte side up. It's going to soak through a lot better, um, be a lot easier to do. So let's get to mixing. So these are, <laughs> these are ghetto patches, but they work. They're that though. It's just like if you were to patch uh, a pair of jeans or patch a bimini top, you're literally just putting something right on. So. You know, all I wanted to do is seal some holes. This isn't anything structural. It's just to keep water out. So what I'm going to do is let this dry tomorrow. I'll probably just give it a light buzz on the edges and then it'll be ready to buzz the whole thing for paint or gel coat. I haven't decided yet. All right, so everything's, the fiberglass is grinded down, everything's sanded, scuffed. Time for some paint. I've got everything wiped down. I use mineral spirits. Um, if I were to be gel coating this, I'd probably wash it or wipe it all down. Um, with acetone. And this could use a good Dawn dish soap bath. Uh, but since I know I'm going in oil-based paint, kind of sticks to everything. <laughs> I mean, shoot, I've painted like heavy equipment, oil saturated steel with oil-based paint and it sticks. So this is all sanded down, grinded, wiped it down with mineral spirits, which is generally what you use to thin oil-based paint. One of the key things to think about is I'm not taking this rub rail off. I just, I'm gonna tape it off. So I really wanna make sure that this rub rail is really clean so that I get a good bite for my tape. So I'm gonna tape the rub rail off and these rod holders. And then I'm ready to mix up the paint. 
uh, and roll it. All right, so here we go. Here's a tip. When you're gonna tape things off, especially if you think your pieces are going to be left for more than a day or two, especially if they're outside, they could get condensation, rain, use some quality tape. Don't use garbage. Um, this tape right here, yellow. So there's a couple different brands that make a yellow tape like this. Not that the color has anything to do with it, but um, this is one, it's Indasa. 3M also makes theirs, which they're very proud of, and for good reason, it's excellent. Either of these two tapes, you can leave these for four or five days in Florida sun, getting rained on, absolutely no problem. You could even pull, if you wanted to do a tape line for paint to no paint, it leaves a pretty clean edge. So um, this is gonna be more than good enough for what I'm doing on this. It also is a pretty high stick without um, leaving much residue, tape residue, um, which is really nice. A lot of the cheaper tapes, don't go cheap tapes. You're gonna leave half of your residue on your project. It's just a pain in the butt. So go with a good tape. Um, it's well worth the money. Here's the paint that we're gonna use for this. So this is Rust-Oleum, it's oil-based paint, which sounds crazy. This Rust-Oleum um, topside paint. So this is an oil-based paint as well. They sell this at Home Depot, sold for boats, obviously, above the waterline. This, what's the difference between this and like your industrial, um, you can't really see that one, but that's just kind of like the regular oil-based paint. The difference is this has a little bit better UV protection. Um, that's probably the main difference. But here's the hack. The problem with oil-based paint and why a lot of people don't use it is it takes forever to dry. You know, in Florida, we're lucky. It's sunny. It's usually pretty warm. But uh, if there's humidity involved, which there is in Florida, it can make it a pain in the butt. Here's the hack to using oil-based products. It is this right here. So you get this at Tractor Supply. Um, you can find it online but this is a hardener. There's a couple things that this does. Number one, it makes dry time way quicker. Number two, it makes it a lot glossier. And number three, the most important reason to use a catalyst or a hardener, same thing, is this will make the, the paint, the oil-based paint so much stronger and more durable than it already is. So especially for a marine application with water hitting it, and um, this is the way to go. This is the key, this is what we're using cheap budget paint. This is just the gray that I've added, you know, some black and white to through time. I think right now it's about halfway full and it's a little dark. So I'm going to add, this is a brand new can. I'm going to add this white. It's going to lighten it up a little bit and give me more material. Oh yeah. About halfway done with the first coat. Coming out good, it's covering well. This is only gonna take two coats. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing two coats on all around the edges, and then I'm gonna work two coats back with non-skid on the floor. So I kinda like this contrast of the wood and gray, huh? I wanna take a quick moment to thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate so much your positive energy towards this channel. Your comments just blow me away. Every time, I'm telling you, every video I do to read your guys' comments, you guys inspire me so much to keep doing these builds. After all, I do these builds for you and enjoy so much sharing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. On with the build. All right, so just finished first coat. Um, it's actually drying really quick. It's cold out. It's probably in the high 60s. Obviously, you can see the sun's not out. But with this catalyst and a little bit of mineral spirits, it's amazing how quick, just barely fingerprinting, but um, it's, it's kicking off quick where I can already do the second coat. All right, there it is. Looking good with the budget paint job. So, I mean, overall this paint job, um, less than a hundred bucks and it's gonna be super durable. So I've got the non-skid on the floor. You can kind of see it.
you know, it's not the most amazing paint job in the world, but for function and, you know, it's not like this boat came with a nice finish. It had splatter paint. Anytime a boat has splatter paint, that's usually to distract the eye from seeing, you know, just a matte finish throughout a boat. You know, there was cracks and little things I could have fixed, but for just a budget paint job to look a lot better, um, I think this thing's gonna be awesome. So I'll give it probably a little acid wash on the outside on the gel coat that'll brighten it right up but it's closed this dried really well last night it's crazy um let me tell you what, oil-based paint is very durable once it's cured, and that's where that catalyst comes into play so much. Got a bit to do today. Hatches, steering, um, put the cleats back on, assemble a little bit, but should be good, so let's get started. I've been back and forth with what I wanna make these hatches with. And I've got this board. some sort of hardwood my buddy Ron gave it to me a while ago it's been in my storage unit but super dense um, I think this will be perfect so I'm gonna cut out I do not have good woodworking skills but I'm gonna try I mean that's how you learn so what I'm gonna do is I did my measurements this will be perfect I'm gonna cut out my hatches for here I'm gonna try to use the router not run my fingers off um, not nah, to be real simple, but I'm going to do this side and then I'm thinking about something for the bow. Um, so I stopped by Marine parts outlet, scored a pretty sweet, sweet little cushion. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking this might be, might go well there, or there is a bench seat, but the whole theme here is I want to go with some wood. I love, uh, finished wood on gray with some black accents. Oof, to cherry, cherry. I'm gonna use this old bracket. I think I've got an idea with a cool tiller for this. So what I've got here is the old old hatch, the old receiver. Um, I, I almost threw this away. That's when you know you're a hoarder, when you don't throw away junk like this. But, this will actually clean up halfway decent. I'm thinking about painting it black so it goes with it. And look at this. Oh man. Oh God. Barney, this is the Tim factor right here. Everything, <laughs> my buddy Barney and I, it's so crazy. We save things and it's wild how many things, if you really think about it, let your brain loose. Things are meant to fit or they will fit perfectly. There's, anyways, Barney, you know what I'm talking about. Here we go. Look at this, look at this. Oh man. I do it black and uh, you know, purely aesthetics. Uh, black is the wrong thing to do on a boat color wise, but who gives a damn? So I think this is gonna be really sweet. So Ed is giving me woodworking 101 lesson. I'd probably be here with a hand sander and a, uh, a jigsaw trying to cut these. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Oh man, see, it would have taken me two hours to do that. Look how nice. Right, so I've got the pieces cut. Um, I'm glad Ed stopped by. 
He's a professional. He's so fast. It's funny. I like take my time, you know, glass work, grinding. I'm like, Rawr! woodwork, stuff like this. I'm always, I don't know. I'm just super slow with it. Taking your time is not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, Ed happened to stop by and <clears throat> give me his little quick run through how he would go through doing this the most effective way. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand these down. I want to get rid of these water stains. So I'm just going to try to hit them with my orbital sander with, I think I've got like 80 grit. Um, quick buzz on the top. If I like it, then I'll hit it with the routers. So first one I'll do is I will hit this radius. And then after I've got that radius done, I'll go around the top edge to get the radius I want. Once they're done, then we will coat them. How good that looks. Oh man. Right, test it. I like it, I like it. A little bit tall, but maybe a lot of bit tall, <laughs> but whatever, you know? Looks good, I like it. Look at that. Look at that. Oh man. Oh man, look at that come to life. Oh wow, beautiful. Look at that. So sick. That light just dance. All right, so I've been back and forth about a tiller setup for the skiff. I was thinking about remote steering, thinking about tiller, and well, I'm gonna combine the two. I'm gonna have, the way I tested it, I'm gonna have the remote um, throttle shifter on the side, and then what I'm gonna do is, I've got two pieces here that I've been sitting on. This is a tiller handle from, it's an old sailboat. It's actually a really nice, piece of wood needs to be refinished but this is one of the bolt-on um, tiller handle assemblies it's pretty cool how how omc did this where you could just bolt this on but what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this and basically cut a piece of the tiller handle and i'm just going to bolt it through bolt it drill some holes drill it on and then i'll have Nice, cool wooden. Um, I'll sand this down and refinish it. It'd be kind of cool.
<laughs> All right, what do you think? Tiller handle. Oh man, I've been wanting to do this for a while to have a wooden tiller handle. I did something a long time ago to test run a motor just to hokey poke it, but this is going to be pretty sick. So I've just got it loosely bolted. I'm going to shape the wood, clean it up. Um, yeah. This is where it pays to have a lot of extra parts. Instead of putting the whole motor on here, we're just going to bolt it up. This slides on, bada boom. Look at that. Now we can put on our handle. I'm going to do this first. Trying to be a one-hand mechanic here. Actually knew a one-hand mechanic once. It's kind of difficult. That's a props to him. Okay, I'm going to tighten that up and we're going to test it. Oh, man! Oh, gosh. Something phallic about this. <laughs> Especially once that's tied up there. It's going to be awesome. Right. Look at that thing. Got my three receivers here. I'm gonna scrub them, get them clean. I'm just gonna be using a Dawn dish soap and bleach mixture. And uh, let's see how clean we can get these things. I think they'll, they'll actually come out pretty good. So let's do it. So you can see a pretty good difference. You know, it doesn't get perfect. This one, you can see where it's like worn. So one thing I could do is I could take my little orbital sander and clean up the edge after. So I'm gonna clean this as good as possible. And then anything that looks like I want it to be a little bit cleaner, I could just sand this plastic down and it'll look even better. All right, so they came out clean. The front one, not so much. It's got stains and it's it's pretty toasty. I mean, this thing's 17, 15 years old probably. So I've been debating painting these black. Um, so I think I'm gonna paint this one black. We'll see how it looks. I don't think it'll be too bad. Oh yeah. So I do wanna see how, how these look inside. I can't wait. Oh yeah, look at that. So these could use another scuff and another recoat, which I'll do. I just want to see how this looks inside. Oh man, look how good that looks. I don't know. I don't know if I like the white around it. I guess we're going to find out if the black looks better. I think the black might actually look better as a trim ring. Yeah. What do you think? Would you do these in white or black? Well, let's do one in black and find out. Right, so the key when you're doing any any spray paint work like this is always go with light coats. Everybody hammers paint like too thick of a coat. It's the most common. Nobody has patience. You got to be patient. So I just did a light first coat. I'm going to give this, gosh, it's windy, so it will dry a bit quicker. Um, but I want to give this at least 10, 15 minutes. I mean, I want it to be pretty dry before I start the second coat. So... That's what I'm doing. I'm going to walk away, do some other things, and let this dry.
All right, so we've got the black trim ring. What do you think? What's better, the black trim ring or the white? I'm thinking the black trim ring. Yeah, stands out. It's a little more subtle. This seems like, I don't know. I'm not like a huge fan of either. Probably I should just paint them gray to match the boat. And then it's just the nice contrast of wood against the gray, but whatever. This is a, it's a budget skiff. You know, I'm not, I figured it's fun to sometimes do a little, little, you know, gotta make it nice sometime. Also got, uh, this was in the hoarding pile. Nice little grab handle. So I figured this goes pretty perfect right there. Sitting down, be holding on to this. You know, throttle, grab on to the, I guess you could always grab on the outside, but the handle's nice. Well, my friends, this concludes part two of the skiff build. I cannot wait to see who this skiff goes to, who buys it, and the new life it's gonna live. I know that you're out there and you're going to appreciate all the work I've put into it. Uh, this is a really cool, fun build, and I hope you've learned something or maybe it's inspired you to do your own project. So, as always, I appreciate you so much. All of your great attention to the channel, your comments, your likes, your subscriptions, you guys motivate me to keep doing builds like this. So until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.